Let's talk about Manlords and his updates, one of the most successful indie titles in the last few years, and now it has become a staple within the city building genre. Let's not forget those RTS mechanics as well. I guess we can kind of call this an RTS. But since its initial release and the few patches that we got, it's kind of died down in terms of updates until at least today. Manlords and Slavic Magic, the developer, has come out to state what's next for the game, almost in a huge update and an indicator to why there's been a lot of silence recently. This is going to get pretty exciting. Despite some hot fixes, it has been quite some time now. Yet we've recently had an article from Video Gamer kind of compiling everything that Manor Lords and Slavic Magic has been talking about. The first big thing is seeing a big overhaul in the coming weeks, shifting the game onto Unreal Engine 5. This is absolutely huge and an indicator to why it's taken so long really to see or hear anything from the developers. Unreal Engine 5 is such a big upgrade from the previous iterations, not just in terms of development, making it so much more accessible to a wider audience. People that want to get into game development so much quicker, there's things like the Quixel Engine that is just one of the most beautiful terrain design things, and also using nodes is so much easier. That aside, Slavic Magic is porting the entire game onto Unreal Engine 5, which, you know, takes some time, but is so heavily anticipated, at least by me. Performance is going to go through the roof. It just does so much for optimization, especially on newer systems. We already have things like DLSS within the game that has really enhanced the performance to, well, graphics ratio. And I still think the game performs pretty well for a smaller title. I still manage to get 60 FPS solidly even when my villages get to large scales. Beyond that, we're going to be seeing some hopefully better graphical improvements. Of course, these things are only limited to what the models and shading and lighting can be put into them but unreal engine 5 once again can be more accessible to help advance those without too much extra knowledge behind it at least that's my limited experience with it new means of resource gathering will be implemented into the game though we're going to be getting fishing and i'm assuming fish farms this is something that i've been wanting for quite some time and this is added into the new terrain types you see we have one map it is the early access map for manlords and it's pretty good but there needs to be a bit more variation, I think, to keep players interested in coming back. I think so far I've had pretty much my money's worth, so anything added on now is just extra for me. But adding things like water bodies is going to be a really interesting addition. And I don't just mean this for the resource collecting. You see, okay, we can now have a new food source, fishing, which is going to be implemented into trading, and I'm assuming only going to be possible in certain regions. Much like you have fertility regions that have better areas for wheat harvesting or barley planting or even rye fields later on with the upgrades, you'll probably have a similar thing with the fishing. It will only be available in the regions that have water bodies and some of them might cross over between regions, some might have smaller, some might have larger ones. This means that you're going to have to trade between certain regions, whether you have your own villages in different regions or you can just have an abundance that you can sell on the trading market to make that regional income. Once again, a new interesting dynamic that I would expect might even be implemented with the changes in weather. There is a game called Ostriv, which is an incredibly cool little city builder set within Eastern Europe during this historical period. It's really well made, and it's not quite as advanced and as technically mastered as Manlaws is, but it has things like winter mechanics when it comes to fishing. You can only do it at certain times of the year. Banished also had a similar mechanic. The rivers freeze over, lakes freeze over, and fishing is no longer a stable income. So much like you have your berries that will stop growing within winter, farms that can only be harvested in certain times of the year, I'm assuming we're going to see a similar thing when it comes to something like fishing. Not only this though, but the physical bodies of water on the map will change the way that even the RTS mechanics work being able to use terrain to your advantage. We've already seen this with being able to put guys on top of hills to give them a battle advantage when defending or charging down, exhaustion mechanics when people are running up hills or long distances, or even archers when they're fighting within trees. They provide less damage, and of course you can take cover with your infantry if the opposing team has more archers in trees, so on and so forth. So having something like water bodies is going to completely change the way you're able to defend areas and attack areas. Being able to use it to guard your flanks, make sure infantry can't get around certain areas, or even being able to position archers beyond a river or a lake, shoot over whilst the enemy has to travel all the way around, taking fire and damage as they go. This is something that I think a lot of people haven't considered. The fact that it will actually affect the gameplay in terms of the RTS battles as well as just providing another resource in order to fish. 
Alongside the fishing, we'll get that graphics overhaul, hopefully porting onto Unreal Engine 5. I don't think it's going to be really, really noticeable, but I guess we'll see. Something especially like water physics and water mechanics are going to add a different element, which I think is probably one of the reasons we're going to Unreal Engine 5, since adding in water physics, I mean, is going to really take a hit in terms of performance. So it needs to be on an engine that can handle it, at least in an easily accessible way, so machines can make sure everything's going on at the same time. But let's talk a little bit about those graphics overhauls because it's all well and saying oh, we're going on to Unreal Engine 5 so it's going to look much better. But what specifically is going to be improved? Well, Slavic Magic has mentioned they're being careful to enable any performance heavy features in UE5 at this point in time, despite the fact that the resolution and sharpness of the new virtual shadow maps is really impressive. So there will be areas that will be improved in terms of the shadows and the lighting within the game but there could be some chances of hit to performance. Unreal Engine 5 tries to negate a lot of that, but it can never be confirmed, especially system specific scenarios. But there is one thing that I think is one of the most incredible parts of this update. It is optional. You don't have to upgrade it to this new update in terms of putting it on Unreal Engine 5. So you can keep the older version of the game. Now, I'm not sure how long this will last, but I'm assuming it's going to definitely be within the testing. You know, every time there's an update that comes out for Man Lords, they release a beta that you can opt into and you can see, give feedback and test how it all works before it fully releases. This could be a permanent thing, keeping on one engine, but that seems completely wild if they go down that route, so I wouldn't hold out for it. All in all, I think UE5 is just a much better engine in total and it can only add improvements rather than take it away, but that's where the time comes. That's why we've had a little bit less communication from the development team, which is absolutely understandable. If you haven't checked out my video on the main channel talking about how people have been pushing for more updates when it's actually not needed just to try and keep the player base up this is a great statement of why it's not necessary this is a huge update that slavic magic has taken their time on and when it comes within the next few weeks at least that's the indicator we have so far i think we'll see a massive influx of players returning to see everything that's coming and that's the trust that's been built up between the players and the developers themselves but let me know what you think. Do you think this is a positive update? And do you think upgrading to a new engine is too much of a risk for a game like this? I think the reason they can do this is because it still technically is a small title. Despite its huge sales and very positive reception, Man Laws still needs to be able to experiment. And I'm so glad that they're not being so strict with their release schedule, the guidelines that they're going with. And this still very much feels like a personalized experience, a communication between the developer and its player base are doing things that are right for the game, not necessarily pushing things out because a publisher wants them to be there. And I hope that they can carry this on. It's a great indicator for now, but I guess only time will tell seeing how successful this is for the longevity of the game. But for me, I think there's a lot of positives that can come through the next update in Manor Lords.